Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I am extremely excited to announce that Dead Matter developer blogs are back, and as such, so are my audio summaries. So if this is your first time tuning in for one of these videos, you can expect this to cover all of the content from the developer blog in an audio alternative format which is basically just me talking at you for a little while. So if you prefer to listen rather than read, this video is going to be for you. A link to the full blog post will also be provided in the description of this video if you want to give that a look as well. One last thing, if you're tracking all things Dead Matter or eager to learn more, you can join their Discord via another link in the description. And of course, subscribe to this channel for all things Dead Matter from developer interviews, gameplay, and much more as development progresses. Anyway, on to the blog post. So Reggie kicks off this post by explaining that developer blogs are back and that the team have been hard at work on the closed alpha version of Dead Matter since the launch. Multiple patches and hot fixes have been passed over the last couple of months with more on the way as the team aim to make Dead Matter the best zombie survival game that they can. Fleshing out the world itself and optimization are the current focuses. Now, a new addition to the blog posts comes next, titled The Community Roundup. In this section, Reggie makes note that since the closed alpha launch, the team have seen massive support from both QI partners and the rest of the community that have been playing the game. Some of the screenshots that have been taken are especially breathtaking, so a couple of these have been selected for this post, which you're seeing on screen now. For future blog posts, the team will be cherry picking their favorites to be highlighted in this section of the update. So if you're currently playing the game or have access to the closed alpha, show the team your best screenshot in the NDA section of the Discord, and you might see your screenshots here in the future. The next part of the blog post also shows a range of the QI partner content that has gone out since the closed alpha. If you're interested in watching those, because we obviously can't fit all of that in here right now, you can find links to all of this content in the blog post itself, which once again is in the description of this video. If you're interested in seeing more of this stuff, you can find it on the Dead Matter Discord. With the community roundup all wrapped up, we dive right into the developer updates for this post, starting with Kyle. Kyle's been hard at work since the closed alpha launch and has quite a lot to talk about here, so be prepared. First and foremost, Kyle's primary efforts have been focused on optimization of the game overall, including various improvements to vehicle systems and multiplayer RAM usage to massively improve performance. Part of the improvements included bringing legacy code from before the closed alpha up to date, which allowed for the refactoring of systems like doors, AI, and PvP networking. Along with this, he's also been working on implementing an improved AI for zombies to increase both performance and get rid of bugs relating to them. Currently, Kyle is working on some new database code, which should fix many issues players are having with saving and loading their games, as well as allowing players to save more complex things on servers, such as placed items or vehicles. And to top all of this off, Kyle has implemented a new Sky Dome with exterior lighting improvements as of the recent patch. The new Sky Dome and lighting will continue to be improved and iterated on in future patches. Metamoth has been spending his time giving Morley more detailed passes to make the area more interesting for survivors exploring the location. He's helped to switch over the system used to handle buildings to a more stable system that is much easier for the rest of the level design team and him to work with. Building materials have also been given a pass to improve their appearance. Buildings overall have had their interior lighting tweaked. Numerous game exploits relating to level design have been fixed and world detailing has been expanded to give players more to find off the beaten path of the world. If you haven't explored the hills and mountains of Dead Matter just yet, maybe it's time for you to do so. I have to admit this next sentence or two is perhaps the biggest part of this blog for me and something that I'm personally very excited about. So Metamoth has been assisting with the quest system to implement substantial changes and Reggie makes comment here that the team hope players will be able to enjoy the quests coming to Dead Matter soon. 
Dr. Yentz has been hard at work overhauling locations such as the Dominion Safe Zone and Grotto Bunker. He's also added a river cutting through Morley, which is part of the goal to make Morley a bit more interesting as a location. Landscape textures have also been changed to bring a bit more foliage to the map. Dr. Yentz is in the process of performing a detail pass on many houses around the map, starting with some near Canmore that look looted. Reggie makes note here that this is quite a large undertaking that is naturally a work in process and as such players will see this come to life over the course of several future patches. Next up we look at Nomad's work in the weapons department. He's been working on two new additions that the team hope to have implemented soon, the medieval sword and the makeshift crossbow, two of some more maybe unorthodox options to what we're used to seeing already. Hax has added some improved flashlights, overhauled the shooting range, added location discovery actors, more attachments and scopes for weapons, as well as adding functioning lighting for dashboard dials, headlights, and tail lights. Hax has lastly implemented two new weapons, the FN57 and the Ruger Mark 7-22. Erlite has performed a rework of the vaulting system implemented in Dead Matter, which is intended to make the process a lot more fluid for players. The new system will allow players to look around whilst vaulting in most cases and avoid taking control away from the player during the vault itself. In the future, the goal will be for the vaulting system to allow players to run, vault, and continue without any halts in movement. Erlite is working with the animation team to add improved animations to vaulting who are constantly tweaking the system to give players more freedom of movement. Much like the rest of the game, the reworked vaulting system is not complete yet, but it is getting there. The team are eager to see some feedback on this iteration, so make sure to give them some feedback on their Discord if you're available. All right, so that is everything for this post. Uh, from both Reggie and myself, thank you very much for reading and or watching, of course. Reggie also takes the time to send everyone a huge thank you for the continued support for the project and all of the feedback that has come with that from backers during the closed alpha. As a final note before we wrap up, please make sure that you're adhering to the NDA in the comments of this video where possible. Remember that people viewing this may not have access to the game, so just remember to keep discussion to what was shown in this blog post. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next one.